All right, so this is Saga Frontier, and with me is the ever knowledgeable Falcon, uh, you know, knower of all Saga games. <laughs> Hello. So we're gonna be running Blue Scenario, and the interesting and one thing about this route is that we're doing, I guess, the most consistent route there is for this, so that yeah, you can complete it relatively well. Unless Moose Tomb decides to say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> as well as you can in a saga game. So yeah, um, I guess I'll just get it started. And uh, when you're ready, Zell, on go. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, let me know what the volumes are, right, guys. So here we have Blue. He's a magician. Our quest is to catch all the magic ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that we could use it. Yeah, and we'll find out why. Scenario, blue scenario is kind of unique in that there's you're not really directed to go anywhere. You just have to uh, collect magic, and eventually the game. Uh, guides you to the right place. It has an ending. I mean, it says the end at the end. This is it's open. Yeah. Your discretion. <laughs> Saga Frontier is pretty infamous for being unfinished, and this scenario is the more obvious one in that regard. Yeah, we don't need system data. We're just going straight. <laughs> but yeah, we gotta kill our brother Rouge. Go figure. They can't call him Red because we already have somebody named Red. Oh yeah, 45 hours, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine playing this game for 45 hours. Oh man, no way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be brutal. Uh, yeah, we mentioned earlier that this is the more consistent route, basically. Saga Frontier has a bit of freedom when it comes to routes, uh, and that's pretty evident in Blue. Uh, because Blue is so freeform and like your only goal is to get magic, so you can choose which magic you get when. Uh, you can either fight uh, Time Lord or Kylan for time or space magic respectively. Time Lord, if you spend the time to build up uh, your mechs, is really consistent. but um takes a lot of time to like obviously build up your mechs and such and Whereas that's a Kylan, for the light dungeon Kylan, you can just like random you can just like pray you get combos and go uh so while kylan is technically faster uh time lord is a lot more consistent there's still it being subtle <laughs> there's still a chance you just die randomly so if you just yes, saw that flash of Rouge right there, you're going to see him in all the ports that we go to because we're racing him to get all the magic. Yeah. This game is very janky. Yeah, we're going to see our first jank right here, which is the junk shop glitch, yeah. which to this day, I still don't understand why it works, but it does. It has a bit of manipulation to it, too, which has to do with your timing and how much money you have. So we're gonna pick up T260G. We're gonna recruit all the robots to do all our dirty work. Yeah, mechs are overpowered with jump shot, but you can build up their stats crazy high. Yeah. Really fast. Where's the entrance? There is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like the backgrounds and the collisions don't match up. I won't mention it too much, but a lot of this game is just kind of roughly guessing where you need your character to go and then hoping that the uh, triggers happen. That's strange. But yeah, Jungle Shock Glitch. Uh, there's like... I can't remember the technical details on why this works, but it basically means you can get a lot of items for nothing, essentially. For like 300 credits or 400 credits, I can't remember how much. 300, yeah. So initially, so, you're supposed to uh, spend 300 to pick up three items, but 
with this glitch you can grab seven at a time for free yeah. after the first and payment. depending on your credits uh the rank of items in the junk shop increases but yeah it being a run we don't need like a speed run we don't need crazy powerful stats so we spend the 300 credits get the um get the ability to get seven items and just roll with it uh, Highway just mentioned before that you can manipulate this. It's technically possible uh, to manipulate the RNG, but it involves you being pretty consistent in your movement and the time you reach the junk shop, and it's entirely dependent on your console and game version. Yep. So, so you will see the same exact pulls every single time if you get there. At yeah, if you're consistent enough, you'll see the same thing. Yeah. And you can advance the RNG by opening the menu and kind of just skip over the, the items you know are bad. Man, this is the longest but, I've ever taken to find a cyber suit. <laughs> and it's, um, there's no really easy way to, like, help others with it. You just kind of have to develop the manipulation yourself, which is why yep. it's not done very often. I'm gonna switch here. Come back to that cyber suit. Man, we're getting laser carbines. Not even the right gun, either. We only need to find one gun, either a lightning cannon or a beam cannon. So that one doesn't take too long, thankfully. Oh, there it is. Alright, we got the cyber suit. We can even get, like, the super rare one, the thunder bolt, but we're not using that. <laughs> There's the lightning cannon. <laughs> At least we have this chill music to listen to. And over here we're looking for either two laser scopes, there's one of them, or one laser scope and one mirror glass. It's all for the robot stats for later, to make them super tanky, hit hard. Also, funny thing about this, we're getting tons of jet boots, which in the other route, when you go after Kailin, is really, really useful, but you rarely ever get it in that route. Oops. There we go. That should be that for scrap. Yeah, uh, jet boots uh, can okay. make combos a bit more reliable in the Kalen route, but because we're just using mechs and tanking everything, it doesn't really matter. So here we're gonna take our first magic quest and pick up rune magic. This whole, like, side of the magic quest is busted. Oh, yeah. You know what's weird about this? You could buy the rune magic that you're gonna pick up anyway. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Saga. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, you sent me on this quest to get the runes, but you're also selling them. So it's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, party choice T260 is easy to pick up, and, like, is just a pretty solid mech all around. We end up getting a Janine car. Uh, again, pretty easy to pick up and easy to uh, suit up and make yep. him powerful enough, and that's basically all we need. In the other route, you just staple a bunch of gloves and gauntlets to them. This one, we're actually giving him proper armor. Yeah. I always wondered about fan art for that. <laughs> like, you just have T260 with a bunch of like gloves stapled on him everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Um, there's technically a third route that does Time Lord and is the fastest route, but we'll talk about combos a bit later, but if you thought combos were already unreliable, like, the stars have to align the perfect way for that third route to actually work. But it's faster for sure. What is it? I'm blanking on the equips here. <laughs> Let's see. To buy or menu. Oh, that's what I was right. Yeah, I had it right. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Moose too. Oh. Encounter dodging is a very important part of the Saga Farm tier runs because enemy counters waste time, increasing the battle rank can make a run impossible. Uh, and your characters tend to be so weak that random encounters will just kill you. Um, I was talking before about like the backgrounds and the collision not lining up perfectly, and Moose Tomb is a pretty good example of it. 
of just things not really making sense in the background. Okay, that was a decent pull. This bug though. Huh? Ooh, don't get stuck on that, please. <laughs> oh no. Playing Bring around the Rosie over here. Are you getting her in the room? Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can pull multiple monsters at once. And oh. <laughs> Moose Tomb is difficult because you need to I'm not boxing pull. myself in here. Are there... <laughs> now, where is that you last one? Pull, like five monsters at once, or four or five monsters at once to try and avoid them. It's uh, interesting. Whew, all right, we did it. <laughs> First try, guys. Oh. That bird though? <laughs> okay, okay. So we're at our first boss. Which should be okay if he doesn't stun us. <laughs> yeah, stunning. Uh, oh, yeah. This boss basically has a turn limit because your characters aren't in here. Um, volume warning, by the way. Burden. This is the first okay. instance of combos. Uh, combos are the uh, speedrun strategy, essentially. Well, uh, so far so good. <laughs> basically, oh. your turn order needs to line up, and that. Oh, good. All right, all right. Oh no. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Uh, combos involve the turn order lining up, which is the quickest stay at the start and the end of combo. It involves using the right attacks because only certain attacks can combo into others. And yeah, combos ignore to combos. The first hit in a combo uh, attacks defense normally and is a normal power. Every subsequent hit in a combo attacks the lowest defense of the monster and increases the damage up to 50%. That's random because of course it is. Is there anything we could do about the volume? But we're taking a detour right now. We got consumed by a giant thing called Tanzer. Yeah, we talked about uh, rune magic being like a rune magic quest being broken this is why tanza is normally like this really long dungeon kind of difficult as well but because we have access to region map we can region map out, out of tanza and then when we go back to devon to uh continue the rune magic quest we can talk to a fortune teller who glitches out says we can't do the rune magic quest anymore and then gives us uh the rune magic anyway yep we're just gonna give up Sorry, on it, basically. is great. <laughs> Region map, like, is a very broken thing. Alright, I boosted Falcon a bit. Hopefully that helps. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Skull Drake is an anomaly. Uh, Modem... Modem Dragon is bad. Oh, no matter Modem what Dragon. you do. Modem Dragon's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ladder? I mean, I can have my mic closer to my mouth, I guess. There we go. What's off to this tune? Yeah, Devon. Yeah, and the Mossberry Hook, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we're going straight to, uh... Mossberry. Mossy Burgers. <laughs> yeah. Going to Mossy Burger. Oh, shoot. Spending <laughs> some time <laughs> points to buy some stuff. There you go. Oh yeah, so we're going to pick up the most important item in the game. Snake oil. Yeah, like, unironically, without yeah. this item, uh, the final boss would be impossible. Yep. And it only costs 80. 80 credits. Yeah. Pretty good deal. Uh, I'll talk about it when it pops up, but snake oil... Uh, there's a glitch with snake oil that makes tower very powerful. Like, the spell tower very powerful later on. But I'll talk about it when it comes in. Uh, now we're going to Mossy Burgers. Yeah, Mossy Burgers. Uh, gonna go talk to Virgil. 
Who's gonna help Basically, us with our magic um, problem? Yeah, just continue <laughs> the magic quest. We will eventually go to Fasanaru uh, to talk to the green guy whose name I can't remember. I just call him Green Dude. Um, he's the LP merchant and sells you items for your, your for LP, basically. No, it's not a glitch. There actually is nothing playing in this dungeon right now because everything's frozen in time. How we're moving around, I don't know. I guess our yeah. magic's pretty good. <laughs> Saga. Saga Frontier. Saga Logic. <laughs> Hey, I didn't get caught in the sand this time. That was a good time. But yeah, we'll be back here once we go visit the dude in Fasnaturu. Isn't there a scenario where we actually have to fight Virgil? Uh, yeah, Ricky scenario. Oh, it's uh, a Ricky the worst scenario. scenario in the video game. <laughs> Virgil is like a weird fight. Yes, he yes, just it is. Part. Show combos. Oh, oh yeah, his... they calls for the overdrive. His name is Gozaris, the green guy. Oh, yeah, green dude. So here we're gonna pick uh, up the coolest sword in the game. <laughs> Yeah, we get a Sura, which is a very, very powerful uh, weapon. And then the Tau Tier pattern and uh, Sand Vessel. Sand Vessel. I was going to say Sandstone. Sand Vessel. Yep, Sand Vessel. Uh, sand Vessel, let's just use the ability Quick Sand, which is very powerful. Now we're just going to throw sand in everybody's eyes. Yeah. Including Time Lord, because he's a jerk. <laughs> so I'm always worried about even though these monsters are stationary, later on, you can still bonk into them and fight them. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So this is the only... fine, but if they're stationary and you bonk into them, oh, <laughs> worst feeling. This is the only um, only route. Oh, and the other time on route, but this is the only time they start moving around. So it's pretty hard to like practice the dodging, and they just kind of move everywhere because enemies in Saga Frontier, like each each enemy type, like enemy sprite, has their own movement pattern, but a lot of them are really erratic. Oh yeah, and we have everywhere. our wonderful music now. Let's see, I think it's uh... Alright, Warlord Armor. Oh, that's right, we gotta do this guy first. Sand Vessel... Sand Vessel, Cyber... That's right. Electro Armor. Let me get over here. So, yeah, just equipping, equipping the mechs so that they have enough HP and strength to actually defeat Time Lord. Why'd you turn my time back on? Or clock, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want your magic, man. Okay, so Asura is equipped on T260, which is important. Uh, T260 is really tanky. Yep. Um, and it gives him access to an ability called Azura's Revenge. So Time Lord has <coughs> access to both magic and physical attacks. If Time Lord uses a physical attack on T260, Azura's Revenge will trigger, and that's the way this fight can go quicker. Otherwise, it's just Sand Vessel, Asura, and just mm -hmm. wailing away at uh, Time Lord until things until he dies or you die basically the funny thing is with this setup it's the stereotypical hold circle to win because you just repeat the same moves over and over again until he dies or until you die and then that's bad but we're hoping for the best here <laughs> yeah we're getting some good combos though usually they sometimes they don't like to play nice and they don't combo and it's the worst feeling ever 
More so on the Kylin yeah. route because you're doing level 4 and level 5 combos. Because combos are relying on the turn order. If you, one of your characters goes before the enemy and then the other character goes after, combos just don't work. Yep. And it's really bad. But thankfully, this route is a lot less reliant on combos. Well, let's see if uh, Engineer Car survives the overdrive. Lately, he hasn't been surviving for me, but we can hold out for hope. It looks like he will. Oh yeah, he's focusing T260. That's great. Oh, nice throwing sand at us, man. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we'll see Overdrive later. Overdrive is very important in Blue's route. Yep, that's the reason why we're grabbing it. Without Overdrive, the final boss would straight up be impossible. Because he has like 20,000. No, he has Aww. <laughs> That was rude. He has like 30,000 HP or something, the final boss, so... Okay, let's see if we get the counter here. Oh, sure. yeah, sweet. Yeah, if he has his star thing with the bell on it over his shoulder, he's doing a physical attack. And that is Time Lord. Hooray! So now it's the magic duel. Uh, it's very, very slow to win the magic duel, so we just stand there and get hit. Magic door? Magic door, magic door. Oh, we gotta Basically get out of here first. <laughs> oh, that's whatever. <laughs> it's coming up, it's fine. Yeah. Not like Kylin, it's like when you kill him and then oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm used to Kylin. Don't mind Same me. here. Once I did the Kylin round, I never looked back. It was so much easier. <laughs> So the max is still going to be used, but because Rouge and Blue merge together, uh, you get access to a whole lot of magic, and Blue becomes, or Rouge technically, becomes a powerhouse, basically. There we go, now it's magic duel time. By the way, this is, uh, this is the end of the game right here. <laughs> yep, there's credits and everything, 100% yep. the end. It's like the only instance of credits in the video game, I think. Like, actually. So I don't know why, but my RNG for this lately, he just keeps doing Psychic Prison and that never does anything. And he does it for two yeah. turns straight. He just bleeds all the time, ever. You can try and use Implosion, but if he doesn't do a first turn, you're just wasting time. Yeah, there's Psychic Prison again. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if you use Implosion, you'll uh, damage yourself instead if you use Implosion. Yeah, if you use Implosion. But, um... It's just slow. Yep. We'll just keep punching them though. You can technically have this fight be over in one turn if he uses the right attack. You know, I, he actually used Magic Stone the first turn earlier, but he, I didn't die. That's strange. <laughs> it's really strange. Or maybe it's because you have. Do you have armor equipped on blue? No, I took it maybe? off. Uh, ever since Moose Tomb. Yeah, that's weird. Why? <laughs> I guess we're dying by Sunray. <laughs> Three of them. The classic. Yep. Blue is dead. Bobble thumb. GG guys. It's the credits. <laughs> Loot's like 35 minutes or something like that. That's just preparation for the final boss. And the final boss is 30 turns or something ridiculous. The final boss is half the round. <laughs> 40 minutes, there you go. So yeah, credits, and now this is Rouge scenario. Yep. Uh, we need to go to Magic Kingdom <clears throat> and get really mad. Oops. Go on in. 
Oh, uh, yeah. I thought you started equipping up here. No, I just do it at the Lorne Dangle. Yeah. I'm gonna try to time something in chat here with the screen. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> oh, nice. You know, I just have square and caps at the credits. Like, what? <laughs> So here we're gonna have our second set of really tight enemy dodging. Yeah, this is rough. I mean, at this point, uh, getting into enemy encounters is fine. Like your yeah. mechs are suited up and everything. But one of the attacks we use in the final fight, uh, Tower, uses all your JP and deals damage based on that. So oh, no. there we the go. more JP you have, the it doesn't really matter in this route, but the more JP you have in Kylan route, the worse it is, because we skip the end in Kylan route. Surprisingly, doing more damage is bad in Kylan. Any percent rouge. <laughs> you will just split the categories, any percent blue, any percent rouge, and blue just ends a credit. <laughs> right. If you collect those sparkles in the wrong order, a really powerful enemy you can't actually beat uh, Bonds. Like, you can beat him, but we're not strong enough, basically. So yeah, now we're just equipping everything for the final fight. Where am I? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, in this route, technically, uh, you get a Sanctuary Stone yeah. before you fight Hell's Lord, and it's not really needed. Because in other routes, you use it to uh, restore your GP, so Tower actually deals the right damage. Alright, it looks about right. Energy chain. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, uh, Wait, because of the way the backgrounds are, they're all pre-rendered <laughs> backgrounds, um, it's hard to figure out where you need to go, so you just kind of have to run around everywhere and hope you press the right direction. So here we get to find out the truth behind Blue and Rouge. Clones, right? I can't remember. Yeah, no, you get was... access to all the magic because Blue and Rouge merged together. He wasn't a clone, he was one magician that was oh, split yeah, that's right. He got <clears throat> split in two. Power of magic. Because <laughs> Saga Yeah, magic's all powerful, dude. Yep. Magic kingdom, magic baby splitting. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this being the consistent route, uh, if you got into this fight and the wrong thing happened in Kylan route, you just die. But you're um, equipped such that things just won't randomly kill you most of the time. So yeah, Blue has a change of heart, or well, Rouge. Really quickly, he's like, made me do this dirty work, and then alright, fine, I'll go do it. I'll save the children. <laughs> So yeah, now we go into uh, hell, yep, which looks hell. like heaven, but it's actually hell. Uh, a thing about this game is that there's lots of weird mechanics that I never really explained to you. Uh, oh, yeah. One of those mechanics is Heavenly Peace Divisor. Uh, it is basically a flat reduction to all damage in hell uh, by 30%, I think, or 33, or something like that. Um, and basically, yeah, it basically just means that you deal a lot less damage than you normally would. Uh, the thing is, Saga Frontier being Saga Frontier, oh, uh, <laughs> special things happen. So, if you're using magic of 
the damaging variety, and I think of specific scores, it's not really known exactly what triggers it, but if, yeah, but we basically do it with magic. If you're using magic, there's a chance that you can break Heavenly Peace Divisor and start dealing full damage again, and we rely on that in Hell's Lord, in the final boss. <clears throat> Bad dodge, but got it this time. Yeah, basically, like, there's strange mechanics everywhere, and Heavenly Peace Divisor is one of the weirder ones. It goes away on the second turn of the Hell's Lord fight as well. It's only the first turn that it's present. Because on the second turn, uh, Hell's Lord goes from his heaven form to his hell form. Have you noticed that quicksand misses on some mobs for some reason? They're floating. Oh. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just did not look out on that again. Yeah, the fish, the fish that should be in the water is like technically floating, so the sand doesn't hit him. No, oh, no, don't want. Floor trigger, please. <laughs> Ricky's pretty fleshed out, but Ricky's bad. Ah, uh, yeah, Heavenly Peace Divisor lowers your demi. It can be broken in battle by magic attacks. Oh, I think All so, right. other attacks as well. That's strange. Here we go. Hell's Lord. So, yeah. Look, it's another egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's the original egg boss. Uh, Hell's Lord, the strategy in all blue routes is to use overdrive so you get 8 turns, 7 turns. That's dependent on your psychic stuff, I believe. Which is why you equip the Norn's Weevil and certain other equipment. Uh, you use overdrive, get a bunch of turns. Uh, use snake oil. Normally in overdrive, all abilities would cost 0 GP. Uh, zero GP. If you use snake oil, that status effect, that quote unquote status effect, uh, status ailment goes away and you start using JP again. Uh, the primary form of damage we use is tower, which uses your, uh, all of your current JP and deals damage based off that. So if everything's costing zero JP, tower will do zero damage and that's not very good. Yep. So we make it cost uh, stuff again and then yeah. awesome stuff happens. So we use Soul Rune to buff everything up, buff ourselves up, use Shadow Servant so that everything hits twice. Uh, use Energy Chain to potentially break Heavenly Peace Divisor, and then Vermilion Sand and Tower. Thankfully with Overdrive we get to hear the wonderful boss music. Would Vermilion Sand count as like a magical Izuna drop? Because look at that animation, man. <laughs> so yeah, this being the consistent route, uh, we have to see the ending, unfortunately. Which is fine, because normally you don't and the game kind of glitches out and you have to yeah. reset the whole console to fix it. If you <laughs> kill uh, Hell's Lord with power grab, uh, something about the property of absorbing HP makes the game uh, skip this ending screen uh, and does some very weird things where if you just if you beat Hell's Lord too many times in a row without resetting your console, the game just crashes. Yep. But because it's consistent route, we get to see the ending. But hey, GG. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. We actually see the ending with the longest fade out ever. I think it's like a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And your console, time. like, every time I see this, I'm like, oh, my console's broken, that's fine. <laughs> and then time's coming up at the data screen where I say I've got none. So time coming up here. And that's time. I've got none. Don't need a memory card to beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really cool because that quick save function, like, way back in the PS1 days. But yeah, that's, that's Saga, Saga Frontier. Frontier. A very weird game. I guess we'll wait for the stream to catch up a bit before we do anything else. Oh uh, yeah, Blue, Blue's route is unfinished in many, many ways. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's finished in the way that they just say, oh, the end. I mean, yeah. 
It's but finishing the first credits. Like, yeah. it's, maybe it's the most finisher. <laughs> we get both credits and the end on it, so why not? Yeah. But yeah, 